Welcome back to the third chair, everybody. My name is Ryan Adams. I almost said my middle name for some reason. Why did you do that? I don't know. I just, I just popped in my head. What is your middle name? I can't tell the people. It's like Isaac and Anthony. I didn't know that. No? No. This is my main man, Joshua Hall. <laughs> <laughs> That's not important. Yeah, it kind of, kind of. My, uh, when I was a young bull, and they would be like retro initials, and I'll read like, raw. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's my dog, raw. Young bull stuff. We, we raw and jaw. What's your middle name? Alexander. Yo! Oh, wait, nah, because what's your last name? Paul. Yeah. Oh, Ja like that, not yeah. J-A-A. I was like, what? <laughs> no. Joshua Alexander Allen. <laughs> yeah, right. I know J. Allen. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know J. Allen. <laughs> well, what are we, we getting into today, bro? Um, Men of God. Men of God. Men that are of God. What does that mean? Um, it means a, a lot of things. We talked about this before too. We talked about like the difference between a kingdom man and a good a good man. Um, but like like we said on that episode, we also specified that there are so many different alleys we could have went um down with this specific topic. And you know, we're just gonna start talking. We're gonna see where where the Holy Spirit takes us. But right. I I made a video. What yesterday? Yes, well, you put yeah. Did you make it yesterday? Or you posted it yesterday or both? Both. Yeah. I posted, yeah, I posted and made it yesterday. And it was basically about, and I made another video today about dying to self too. Um, it was basically about dying to self. And in the context I was talking about was in the relationship between like a man and a woman, um, like basically the man and woman had a problem and the man is just like, yo, she's mad for no reason. God's like, uh, you need to like, what do you say to him? Oh, you made it. I know, right? <laughs> what do you say to him? Go. Oh, maybe it was a go apologize? He didn't tell him to go apologize. Oh, but no, he said that he has to, um, he didn't say go apologize. What did he say? Hold on. Give me that five seconds to think. He didn't say go apologize. He said, you need to. Oh, he said that you need to put yourself in her shoes and uh, also not just put yourself in her shoes, but you need to actively be trying to feel the way that she felt when, that, when you said what you said to her that hurt her. Yeah. So you can... Even if you don't feel like you're wrong, you have something to apologize for because then you'll see why you're wrong in her eyes. You know, bro. Yeah, that was. I, and I listened to uh, Isaac Curry this week from Pastor Jerry Flowers Church in Texas, Redefine TV, and he was talking about that. And I literally had to. I had a, had a chance to like use what he was teaching because he was saying like, "You are sorry," like how you said in your video, mm. "You're sorry because you made her feel a certain way." Was it your intention to make her feel that way? No. No. And I think that's like, that's really difficult. I think that's something that's been challenging for me. Like, knowing I don't mean don't mean bad. And even sometimes in the best intentions, you still hurt people's feelings. Yeah. Or like, in this context, you still hurt women's feelings. And it's like, he was like, bro, you got to say sorry. Because you did you want, like, you might not necessarily... Depending on what you said, you might not change what you said, but mm. you still are sorry that it hurt her. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, exactly. I hope so. Even if you don't, like, realize... Like, even if you don't understand why it hurt her, you do understand that your words hurt her. Yeah, And, like, bro. that's what you're sorry for, yeah. you know? You don't have to understand, like, why... Or agree with how she mm-hmm. got to her hurt, but you're like, okay, yeah. and I that, love you. That part, bro, yeah, that, that took me a minute to get to. You know what like, I mean? I guess, like, it's only, like, that... Like, say that again, bro. Like, you don't have to agree to how she got to her hurt. Like, you don't have to agree why she thinks you're wrong. But you can still be empathetic towards her being hurt. Exactly, because she's her first. in a first. genuine way. Yeah. Cause that's a, you see, that's... We've said on other episodes, too, that, like, when it comes to love, love is... It, it's it's so much it's, more than what we think love is. Yeah. Like, you think about God, and the more that we learn about love, the more that we learn about God, because he is love, you know? Yeah, bro. And you have to think about it in the context of, like, God, when he came down here as Jesus... And he lived our life, and he, um, like, you know, he did, he did his thing. He went back to heaven. He's able to relate to us in all these different ways. And when we sin, or like, um, I guess that would be us, like, making him up, him upset, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he may, he doesn't agree to how we got to where we got to, but he's like, I love him. Yeah, you know, and like that's the basis of it all. Facts, because when actually, no, let me not go that way, because I was about to do something, but I don't want it to be that way. You don't gotta do that, bro. Yeah. I'm not gonna force you. Yeah, nah. He wasn't. No, I'm not. Nah. 
You're but that's man. facts, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. My daily affirmation. <laughs> that's facts, though, bro. Like, we don't have to agree. And that's the only thing that I would, I think is, well, that whole, to get to the point where you get, where you say, I dis- I don't agree with how she got to being hurt, but I am sorry that I hurt her. Like, because I think a lot of times, because we don't understand how they got there, or it doesn't make sense to us how a woman mm. might have gotten there, or we're like, that's wrong mm-hmm. that she went from here to there. Mm-hmm. We take that and then make it the same as, well, I can't be sorry. Exactly. But it's yeah. like, no, you actually can. Mm-hmm. And to, for real, for real, I only found that out when I was willing to go to God and be like, what? Like, am I wrong? Like, I, but I had to be bold enough to hear God tell me I was wrong. Right. Because when I went to God about that, that kind of situation, <clears throat> like, because it happens all the time. It's like, it, it's happened with my sisters, it's happened yeah, with like yeah. other women in my life. Yeah. But it's like, I went to him with the expectation that like, because it feels, it feels crazy to like, be like, yo, I disagree with what you feel. But, so God, you're just going to tell me that I got to apologize anyway? Mm-hmm. It's you like know? a double negative almost. Yeah. yeah. It, feels, it feels like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's looking out for you. Right. No, yeah. I know what you, you mean. Know? I know what you mean. I know but what it's mean. like, you got to trust. I had to trust God to look out for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when I went, when I trusted him to look out for me, I actually found out that I don't have to take away where I may feel slighted, but in Instead, I just need to grow in my empathy towards others. Yeah. Because it's like nobody has to be discounted. We no. just have to be empathetic towards each other. And that's not even just like a a, a man thing either. Like, yeah, that's, mm-hmm. like, that's, like, that's literally in, in everybody. Yeah, every thing. relationship. Yeah. And I think it's also, um, it's a part of like dying to yourself, you know? Yes. Because we're like, you're not even going to be able to get past that, that barrier of, oh, I don't agree to how you got upset. So now... Like I, I just, I just can't apologize for anything. I don't yes, see. Bro. There's no reason to be sorry. Like you know how they say, yeah. um, "Don't apologize if you don't mean it." Like you'll generally not mean it if you don't. Mm-hmm. If you're not able to get past that that barrier of Facts. I don't understand how you got here. Yeah. You know, and that's important too, though. You still like because I, I wasn't gonna apologize because I didn't mean it. Right, right. But then I was like, God, I don't. I feel like you're telling me I should apologize, but I don't mean it. So we mm-hmm. gonna, what what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in that where I was like, God. I don't want to apologize, but I also feel you tugging at my heart. And when I took that to God, instead of, like, being justified in my own feelings, like, it says in Proverbs, like, a man who fought... Oh, let me just get it. Okay. Let me just get it. That's I was going to go the word to, of God. Yeah, I was going to go to a different scripture, but then that one came up. Go so. ahead and get it. If he's, if he's telling you to get Gotta it, go get ahead it. and get it. It says, he who willfully separate... Pro- well, I'm so excited. I'm skipping the, <laughs> the, the chapter and verse. Okay. It's Proverbs 18.1. Um, he who willfully separates himself from God and man seeks his own desire. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said that crazy. He who separates himself from God and seeks his own desire quarrels against all sound wisdom. Mm. And so it's like, if I'm going to go with what I think all the time, I'm like, nah, I said what I said. I meant what I said. They shouldn't have been hurt by that. If they got to deal with that hurt, I'm right. And I'm deciding because of those that position of my heart, that heart posture, I'm not going to take it to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Now I don't get wisdom. Mm-hmm. And I'm denying it. But you have to take your experiences and bring them to God so they can be like purified and refined by his wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. And then you move from that place. That's such a big thing too, especially like in today's culture, especially with the... um the new saying, stand on business and everything, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and I feel like it's a lot harder, especially if you don't have like Christian friends or a Christian community to reach out to or anything. It's harder to, to not like stand on business. You feel me? It's harder to not like be like, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stand on this, whether or not I eventually realize I'm wrong. (laughs) I'm still going to stand on what I said because I said it, you know, that kills. Yeah. That kills. And it takes, it takes an, a, like, you're going to have to kill your pride in order to step down for that yeah. pedestal, obviously. But if you don't have the right group of people around you, they're you not going to have... encourage you to do that. Yeah, you're not. And they're they're, gonna... if they encourage you to stay up there, you're going to stay up there. Yeah, bro. Like, it's okay, girl. You said it anyway. Just go ahead and stand on it. Yeah, that and yo, that's how you, when people, bro, that's what people encourage you to gamble with stuff that they can't lose on. Mm. So it's like, mm. hey, 
Yeah, Ryan. Bro, don't let her punk you like that, bro. You said what you said. Stand doing it. Yeah, literally. And then you lose your wife. Yeah, crazy, And I got right? mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dance crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, Only bro. crazy. Because <laughs> guess what? I don't have your level of investment in your woman. Mm -hmm. That's your woman. Yeah. So, and two, while you're, like, for me, as a friend, is to give you what I believe is sound advice. And then for you... You might hear what I got to say, but it might be different from what God is telling you. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, bro, you you right. You know, that that something may have been a little wild, but you, you know, you still want to have your word mean your word. But then if God is telling you, nah, but I got something different, then you need to have room for him to say that to you. Mm -hmm. Like, I was talking to my dad yesterday, and I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I really don't listen to, um, like, anybody who I don't trust what they say about, like, God in their relationship with God, I'm not going to give them only but so much um, what they can say into me about love and love life because I know that their opinion, they're not allowing their opinion to be influenced, influenced by, by God. God. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, like, I heard this woman, she was talking, she was spitting facts. But I was like, I'm definitely not watching that video again because if I go only off what she says, even though I agree with a lot of it, if I take her word and make that the new standard for my life, then I have no room for God to have a say. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So now she just, yeah, she's right about her experience. But like the way I put it is, when you do that, you have no room for a but God experience. Mm. Like think about it, Lazarus, I was dead. Yeah, but God. But God. Mm. So you're saying if you're just gonna get your information from someone who doesn't like talk to God too, then it's just them. It's so just them. But them. Yeah, it's just mm. them. And they can't save you. Yeah, literally. Like, do and because let's think about it this way: even if what somebody is speaking is true to your experience, your experience, according to God, does not have to be all there is, and it is not all there is. Mm. So, if you want, if you want what they say to be the extent right of your life, oh, by all means, take it and accept it as all that there is. Mm. But like, if you want some more, then you better believe that I have more. Mm. You got to leave room for me. Right, right, right. You know what I think is important, especially when it comes to... I keep saying especially. I don't want to say that no more. Okay. I'm not saying that word no more. I didn't think you said... I didn't... I just keep hearing it from myself. Oh. You know what I think is important also? <laughs> <laughs> like when you're talking about um, communication, relationships, and everything. And this goes for both parties. Not just the man, not just the woman. This is for both of y'all. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand that God wired the man and the woman differently. You know? Ooh, yes. Because yes. obviously man came first. And... Um, the woman came from the man's rib, mm -hmm. you know? So we have similarities because we she is from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. started over. She no, is, no, you're good. Yeah, she is flesh of the... Bone in to, my bone, flesh yeah, of my flesh. Yeah, I was trying to say that, yeah. She is bone in the bone, flesh of the flesh, right? So they have similarities, but in all in all, they're still wired differently. Like, we yeah. know that the man is a leader or whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. and the woman, she's... Uh, um, uh, I don't know what they call her, honestly. They help me. The helpmate, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. But, like, even, like, deeper than that. Like, the woman is definitely, like, more emotional. Sensitive. You know? Sensitive. She's, that's what it is. She, like, my dad, the way my dad has been describing it is, like, she has, like, she's, in that way, she's more similar to the Holy Spirit than men. Mm. Because she can sense it. Like, even if she don't, like, when they say, like, a woman's intuition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can sense it. I like that. So, sensitivity is not just, like, she's soft. No. She can feel. Okay, yeah, so we'll go with that. So she has that, not advantage, but she has this more keen that asset. sense. It's that an asset. asset. We'll say that. Yeah. Over the man that the man doesn't have. That mm -hmm. doesn't make her weaker than the man. It just makes her, it, it's the reason why Distinct. she goes with the man. Yeah, you know? like when I, I was thinking about that, I was in my heart a lot this week. Like men and women are equal of value in God's eyes. He doesn't love man more than he loves woman. No. The Bible says he has no favorites. Right. Yeah. So he does not love man more than he loves woman. At the same time, they are, dis they are distinct. Mm -hmm. If he wanted there to be no difference between the two of them, he would have just left everything in Adam or he would have just made a second Adam. Yeah. A literally. clone. He would have just made a clone. Yeah, of Adam. Yeah. But he, when he made Eve, he didn't just give... He didn't make Eve with all the same qualities as of Adam. Right. He took things away from him so they would be complementary mm -hmm. and not just in That's company. That's what I was looking for. Complementary. Yeah. yeah. Like they complement each other. It's one thing to be in company, but it's another thing to be in complement. 
Right. Compatibility. That, that's why it's important, like, to recognize those differences when you're talking to the opposite gender, especially in a relationship, because you have to realize that you can't work through a conversation the way you would work through it with another man. You know what I mean? Facts. If I'm a man. Facts. So, because, like, for example, when I talk to my girl... It comes across different. Yeah, because if I talk to my girl and we have, like, a little conflict or whatever, I am... I'm thinking in my head, God wired her differently than he wired me. You know? I love her, but I have to get to the bottom of her emotions and mm-hmm. her wiring and everything in order to try to communicate best what's best for yeah. us. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I, I do feel you. Like, so I'm gonna read you these two scriptures, and it goes right along with your point. The first one again is, is Proverbs 18 4. The words of a man's mouth are like deep waters. Mm. When I read that, to me, I'm like, I mean, them Jones is hitting hard. They're hitting hard. Yeah. Right? And now, that's what Proverbs tells us. The man's words, them Jones is heavy. So, and that's Proverbs 18.4. But now I'm going to go to 1 Peter 3, verse 7. And this is, again, this is furthering the reason to why you have to read the whole Bible. Because mm-hmm. there's they comp- the different parts of the Bible give more t- context and fullness as you read the whole thing. So Proverbs eighteen four said the man's of a, the words of a man's mouth are like deep waters. Mm-hmm. First Peter three seven, in the same way, you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. That's in Proverbs. No, this is First Peter three. Oh. And so it's like, when you're, like how you just said, when you're speaking with your girl, yeah. or if you're speaking with your mother or with your sister, you have to speak with great gentleness because your words are heavy. Mm. Wait, verse Peter 3, what? Seven. Okay. I'm reading the Amplified today. Okay. Um, so it's like, if your words are heavy in general, how much heavier are they going to be on the ears of a woman who loves you and wants to be loved by you? Right. Mm. And you're not going to tell me that you don't want your... Man, she's so sensitive. Yeah, yeah, your words are already heavy. And you want your word to mean something to her, right? More than anybody else. You want her to care. So the greater the care, then the greater ability and um, the greater vulnerability you have to hurt her with your words. Mm, Okay, you know what? And so it's like, even if you're not saying something that is hurtful, she can still be hurt. Right, bro. Okay, see, so now, now I kind of want to jump to Ephesians now that you said that. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. He's, like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, what's that, 521? 520, 520. I started mine at 525, but I don't, you might have something different. No, nah, I'm just trying to see what the section started. Yeah, that's for husbands, yeah. Okay, okay. Because I thought about this like two days ago. Mm-hmm. Try to follow me through the breakdown. Got you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm just trying to because this hand got a little sweaty. That's all. Oh, you over there thinking? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm really gonna try so hard not to lose my train of thought. Just, just try to follow me. All right. So I'm gonna hold the track up. So, relationships model like on um, relationships. We model um, Christ being the bride of whoa, uh, the church being the bride yes, of Christ, right? Yes. Man and woman. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. We know how to love because the Bible tells us how to love. Mm-hmm. Like for men, it says for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Yes. He gave his life up for her, right? Yes. Okay. So boom. Boom. We, like I just said, we are a representation of Christ in the church. And we're supposed to also love how Christ loved the church. Yeah. So when Christ loves the church in the Bible, there's like so many examples of that, right? Mm-hmm. We think about um, Christ loving the body of Christ because that's what the church is, right? Yeah. The body of Christ. So... <sighs> <laughs> if you go even deeper than that, what makes up the body of Christ? Us. Exactly. So we can we see examples of Christ loving the church all throughout the New Testament when he's talking to his disciples, his people, right? Mm-hmm. Example I was using the other day when I was not with anybody, just by myself and God. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it was in Matthew. Um, and, oh, I was actually in Luke, but, you know, they all be saying the same stuff. But... <laughs> but uh, Christ was talking about how he was gonna um, he was gonna bathe the feet of of um, all the disciples. I was with them mm-hmm. at that point, 
And I think Peter was the one that was saying, like, nah, you don't need to do that to us because, like, yeah, 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 you're, yeah, you're yeah. over us. And um, God basically was in the, not God, Jesus, just so no one gets confused. Um, Jesus is God, just so no one gets confused again. <laughs> but Jesus was basically, basically like, nah, like, I gotta do this. I forget what the reason he gave was, but, like, that's not important right now. The important thing is that he did it anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's caring for his bride right now. Not his bride being Peter, but his bride being the church. Yeah. He washed all of their feet. Yeah. And one of the major things was, okay, I washed y'all feet, so now you guys can wash each other's feet, you know? So now he's showing, mm. I'm, in this, oh, hold on, let me keep going, let me keep going. In this relationship, he's showing, okay, I'm the man in the relationship. I'm showing you how to love, so now you guys can love each other, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way that I taught you how to love. Mm -hmm. We bring it back to a man and a woman in, mm -hmm. in the world. God is showing me how to love the man. I'm the head of my wife. If God shows me a certain type of love, he washes my feet. I have to show that same type of love to my woman so she can wash my feet in return. And that's how we get a love that that works, like flows like water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, bro. And that actually, breakdown yeah. makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Because it's, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And it's like, as, and that's the thing too, in that script, as you're in your breakdown, you're saying like, God is showing me how to wash feet. And not just showing me, but telling me yeah. to wash her feet. Right. And what I've come to find out is like, you got to wash her feet to show her that if she wants to, it's safe to wash your feet. And so sometimes you're going to wash some feet that ain't going to wash yours. Mm -hmm. So that means you can't wash somebody's feet because you want them to wash yours. Right. You got to wash them because you just want to. Sometimes you're going to have to wash your feet even when they don't want to be washed. Peter didn't want his feet washed. He didn't feel worthy to have his feet washed. But you have to wash them anyway. That's what he's like. No, he's like, please, can I wash? That's what sacrificial love is. Because and then he tells them, he tells the disciples at another occasion, he who is the greatest servant among you, mm -hmm. he's the greatest. Exactly. Exactly. Not he who's the he who is the lowest among you, he who is the greatest servant. And so it's like, you can't take, oh man, you cannot take your service of washing feet away because your feelings are hurt. Mm, no, yeah, literally. You can't do that. Literally. That's conditional. Yeah. And I say, like, you can't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because now you're... If you want somebody to have something, like, give it to them. Mm -hmm. And if that's... And if, and if you're giving something to them that is not healthy, then stop. But if we're talking about because your feelings are hurt... Yeah. Something like... Are you going to walk away? Right. Because at that point, it's a transactional love. Yeah, bro. Like, if you're not going to... I feel like to, there's a fine line, but there's also at some point, it's like, all right, well, if it's not that big of a deal, like, don't refuse to have a conversation and not walk away. Like, you, like if you're so upset that you don't want to wash feet, you also can't then be like, well, I don't want to talk about it. Ever. Mm, ever. Yes, that's the main part. Ever. Yeah. No, we can't ignore this. Because if you don't want to talk about it, then then we can't continue to be in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. That's a selfish request. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. So don't be like, I'm not going to talk to you. Or like, and, or, or some people will do this like, oh, I'll talk to you, but I ain't washing your feet. Yeah. No, no, no. That's where it starts. That's the foundation. Right. Because that's what keeps us humble. And I, 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 I know we, we kind of, the washing your feet thing, this is just... Service. Yes, a sacrificial love type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we're saying when we say, like, washing your feet. I just want to make sure they don't want to... I don't even know, Kia, I don't even know if it's sacrificial. It's just, like, to well, me, I just see it as service. I think it's those those kind of go hand in hand, in my opinion. I think they're kind of similar, but it's, it's a little different. Because, I like, if you wash somebody's feet, you sacrifice in pride. Yes. Yeah. But, like, I, to me, like, if you saw a husband washing his woman's feet, you wouldn't say, oh, he had to sacrifice you know his what? pride to do that. No, you're right. You know yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I think it's just service. Like, yeah. And so I think sometimes it it is sacrificial. I think it could become sacrificial when it requires you to put down. Mm -hmm. Like, in the moment of offense, all right, now, yeah. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. Even then, I still say it's mainly service more than I know anything. what you mean. Because we serve, we live to serve. Yeah. But, yeah. I feel like if you're not, anyone you're not willing to serve I feel like relationships can only go as deep as you're willing to serve and they're willing to serve you. Mm. Like, and that could mean a multitude of things. Like, um, service is like how you show up for your friends. Right. How do you not talk, when I say serve, I'm not talking about cooking and cleaning and stuff like that. Because even cooking itself, the act is not cooking, the act is care. Right. So I'm serving 
and care. Right. That's why they say like hospitality. They don't say like like some of when they say like the in, they work in a hotel. They say I work in the hospitality industry, mm-hmm. or even food. I work in hot like food and hospitality because it's care. Mm-hmm. It's not like oh we just feed people. No, yeah. And now you said the the Bible talks about doesn't it talk about um what Jesus say to the disciples like go out and like feed the homeless or feed the hungry mm, something feed like the, that feed the lowest who oh yeah yeah um serve the serve the the least among you and serve the least among me mm-hmm. like. That's the little thing. I'm, I don't think that's the first I'm thinking. About. Are you talking about like the one that was like he who didn't who who won't serve? No, nah, something about feeding the hungry. No, nah, yeah, could he do say that too? I might just yeah. be a different one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it, <laughs> but because <laughs> that's like that's like a very specific verse. But um, I was just gonna say like this whole thing about love is at the basis of, of like all of it like like you were yeah. saying you just said something about service yeah you said when something I, just the, like, your relationships only go as oh, far only as, go as deep serve. as you're willing to serve yeah, yeah 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 so like the way I think about it is if Jesus calls us to like show the type of service and love to like others the way that he did like how much deeper will your relationship be with the one that you're actually mm-hmm. with bro that's as you were saying that it literally like came on me like this is why it's important for relationships to grow over time and like linearly and mm-hmm. not just like just shoot up a shit. Yeah. yeah. Cause when you give, like, it's important that your service matches your position. Mm-hmm. Like where it, or when I say position, your level of service should match your level of relationship. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you start off, you're not gonna serve that much because the relationship's not that deep. Mm-hmm. And so what that allows you to do is you don't give more than you wanna give. So you don't become bitter because that's another, I think it's Colossians 3.19. It says, husbands, don't become bitter with your wives over the responsibilities that come with marriage, mm. which is speak gently, you know, like be kind, be like empathetic towards her because your words have weight. But anyway, in a, when you're starting off early in a relationship, you're not giving a lot because you don't really want to give that much. And they're, they shouldn't be given that much. And so what happens is, God is giving to you, and you're giving out what you want to give out. Now, as the relationship gets deeper, you start to give more, but you're also receiving more, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, but it's like the whole time, God is still pouring on each of you. Right. But like, if you start to give more than what, if you start to give a lot, and it's to the point where it is drastic, not just a little bit, but drastically more than what you're receiving, you, you're now you're out of balance. That's how you know, like the whole um, equally yoked thing. Like people always have trouble deciding Ooh, yeah, who's that's equally a, yoked and everything. You yeah, know, yeah, that's a good. I never thought about it in terms of like service, but that's a great. Oh no, yeah, because the standard is like for the Bible, equally yoked means having um, relationship with another believer. You know, that's mm-hmm. when you're equally yoked. But if you want to go even deeper than that, you can be equally yoked in terms of maturity in Christ. Yeah. You know, so me like. Obviously, like I do a lot for God, you know. Mm-hmm. So if I were to date, date like a new believer, I wouldn't be able to say that we were equally yoked in the ter- in the sense of yeah. she doesn't, she's not in, as mature in Christ as she, I'm not saying this right. She's not mature en- enough in Christ. Wait, am I saying this right? No, yeah, to understand things the way you would understand it. Is that what yeah, you're I'm say? trying to say basically she might still be attached to stuff in the world that, that I'm not attached to right. anymore, you know? And that could easily cause conflict. Yeah, because exactly. Because you're like, why are you doing that? Because that... <laughs> no, yeah, literally, because that's the, that's the same problem that you would have with the unequally yoked believer. No, mm-hmm. not believer, but unequally yoked person. No, yeah. Non-believer person. Yeah, it's I mean. like, yeah. imagine you're trying to run a, a three-legged race with somebody, and it's like, you just want to win. Yeah, yeah. And they want to look around and, like, stop, mm-hmm. take pictures. And they want to win too, but yeah. that's like priority number four. Yeah, and I'm not even <laughs> talking about like stuff in the world as in like drinking, smoking, and all that. I'm talking about like the inner work that you have to do for yourself. Yeah, like, that's one of the first. Like, like the emotional work that you got to do for yourself. Like the yeah. dying to your emotions and the the whole the whole giving up your pride on certain stuff. Yeah, the trusting whole, that God knows. No one to shut your mouth and everything. You know, the whole accepting your role in the relationship. You know, mm-hmm. because like that's another big thing. Like a lot of people, you know, in the world today, um, like men want to be women and women want to be men, yeah. and women want to take um the man's position in a relationship. So then, when uh, they get in the man's relationship, they want to do the man's part bro, too. Bro, the ah, uh, bro, that's the part where it's like the the enemy has been at work for centuries 
because we look at stuff in America like slavery and oppression and like how it put down black people, but at the very bottom, it was black women, right? Mm-hmm. And so for centuries and centuries and centuries, black women in America and, and elsewhere have been always like suffering from bad men yeah. of every race. You know what I'm saying? And so now we reached this point and not only were they like just put down, but they're told like, man, you suck. Like you're not, yeah. you're, you're trash. Like degraded you have no value. Like most, yeah, yeah de- degraded. And so now it's like, and the woman really like girding herself up and being like, no, mm-hmm. like I am worth something and I'm worth probably more than what you think. I think where the enemy has used that to his advantage is using the confusion with like being able to do everything that a man can do. And it's like, God's like, yeah, you can, but like, I don't even want that for you mm-hmm. because I want a man to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that you can't, but you don't have to. You don't have yeah. to. That's not why I called you to do that. I didn't call <laughs> you to that. I called someone to do it for you. Yeah. And so it's funny because we have a lot of women who are like, they want a man to do, like basically be their dad and like do everything. everything. Like they don't want to do nothing for nothing. Yeah. And then there's other women who is like, it's hard to give to them mm-hmm. because for them, because of history and things that have happened, so many men gave to them under the pretense of like, yeah, and I'm going to use that later when I want to get what I want. Right. Transactional and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like they had to wash their back so much, but it's like, you got to come out of that to heal so that I can have somebody like give to you stuff that you don't even have to work for. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know? yeah, and, that, like, and when you're so busy trying to be, and this again, this is for anybody, mm-hmm. when you're so busy trying to be prove that you can be somebody else, you don't actually develop in who you are. And the person that God is preparing for you, you might not see them if you're not prepared for them. Yeah, that's literally that verse that we was talking about months ago, talking about don't miss the harvest, um, don't fall asleep during the harvest. Or no. If you don't plow now, you won't be ready for harvesting season. Mm. What verse was that? I don't remember. Oh, man. You remember talking about that with me? No. No. <laughs> no. You said, mm. I'm like, oh, you remember. <laughs> you don't remember that? I'm a good actor. You know, you know, what, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Are you about? talking about um, if you, if you, sowing the, oh, 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 sow in the morning and sow at night for you know not which will. Which, when the harvest season will be here yeah, or something like that? Yeah, which one will come? I think so. They're like, what seed will bring forth what fruit? I think I, that might be it. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like so. Yeah, <laughs> there was a while ago we was talking about that. Oh, man, they, they didn't change the alarm. I was excited to hear the new alarm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What you want to do? You want to you want to do a part two on this episode? I can't say anything I need to say. We could um, oh, okay, because I got I got another part that I think I, I ask you about it, but I look you feel like you would have something to. Say it. I don't know. Like, well, I'll tell you what it is, and you let me know if you think. Okay. Like, you want to keep going or not. Did you finish your thought? I wasn't saying anything. Oh, wait, no, I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah I, was, yeah, I mean, I don't know what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Hold on. You, yeah, because you was on one. You <laughs> was up? talking about, like, when I, I said, because you might not, if you spend time trying to be, trying to prove that you can do any something that Oh, anybody, because you was talking about um, uh, the woman... And with with the, what did I about to say? Was I was about to say something about the. I said, "Don't miss." Don't miss your harvest. Yeah, but like, why was I about to say that? Because I had said, "Oh, because you you didn't do yourself work." So yeah. by the time that girl is ready for when you're supposed to be ready, you got to be don't ready do that to be work, the man. Yeah, that you can miss her. Yeah, you can mess up your time, man. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't do your work, you can miss her entirely. Because mm-hmm. you think God is going to give it to you if if you didn't do what you're supposed nah, to be bro. doing? Because there could be a set time a that set God has. Boy, you better. <laughs> there could be a set time that God has when you're supposed to meet your person. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you're supposed to meet your person. But if you don't do what you're supposed to be doing for the kingdom, you're for not going to be ready. They're going to be there. They're not going to be ready. Why would, he give, why would he give his son an unfinished product? Bro. Or his daughter an unfinished product? And that's what... So, one thing my pop told... He, he was showing me this joint the other day. He said, no spouse is given finished. You, guess you get raw materials, but those raw materials have to be dug up. Mm. Like, you got to go, like, you know how they say, like, diamonds? You got to dig up diamonds. You got to mine them. Mm-hmm. But even when you bring diamonds to the service, they're not store ready. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, literally. You got to clean them things up. You got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Is that I believe that's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And shout out to my boy from my B group, Khan. Shout out to you, Khan. Bro, he said something crazy when we, in, in uh, Bible study. 
He said marriage is like the hyperbolic chamber. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I don't know what you're saying, but go ahead, keep going. You know, wait, wait what's know, hyperbolic chamber? Remember in, go, in, in Dragon Ball Z? Well, I don't know if he said hyperbolic chamber, but that's how I understood it. Okay. <laughs> and in and, and, and Dragon Ball Z, you go in the hyperbolic chamber, you like accelerated oh, when, growth. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. So it's like marriage will accelerate you will it accelerate your spiritual growth because you're in union with, you're in the tightest union that there ever will be that exists in everything. Mm -hmm. Like marriage, two flesh become one. You don't mm -hmm. get no tighter than that. Facts. He was saying it really ex accelerates your spiritual growth because you're living in such close proximity with another person that God loves just as much as he loves you. Mm. So he's not going to allow you to be wildin' because your wildin' hurts somebody else that he loves. Mm -hmm. mm. And so while that is true for you, it's also true for the for other, other person. person. Yeah. God is not going to be okay with them wildin' because their wildin' hurts hurt you. you. And he loves both of you. Right. And so I think that's another thing that helps you lay down and die to it. It's like, you have to stop. Like, I said this in your comments. I said, when you're being vulnerable, and laying down your pride or putting yourself out there, like a chance to be hurt, you have to look at it as God is holding your vulnerability, mm -hmm. not the other person. Right. Like you're gifting it to them, but whatever they do with it, if it's the wrong, the worst thing, you have to trust like God can fix anything. Mm -hmm. Like if they, you give, them the, you, give the, you give them your heart and they stomp on it and throw it back at you, you got to trust that when, 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 you, when they give you a little heart back, <laughs> God can be like, all right, cool. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? Like, he got you. Yeah, right. And there's a, a scripture that says, like, you die in the flesh, but you're quickened by the, by the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like when you're killing your flesh, or rather, when... Because <laughs> Jesus didn't kill himself. Nah. He gave himself up, up to be murdered. Yes, sir. So when you're giving yourself up to be murdered, you have to trust that God can restore anything. Mm, that's a great analogy. No matter what it and is. Imagery. Yeah, facts. When you, when you, I don't want to tithe no more, or like, I ain't trying to tithe, whatever you give up in the flesh, he can quicken in his spirit. Mm -hmm. So, and, and not just necessarily in your spirit, but he works in the spiritual realm. He can, bah. Yeah, right. He can do, he, he don't got no, he Limits. is. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He can, he, he's him. Like, literally. They be saying he's him. My boy just is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just he is. He is. <laughs> No, that's it was crazy. I was, yeah. I was even reading this morning, and it was talking about like um, Jesus. Jesus, like when he was coming in Revelation, like say the day type time on a so horse he, and everything. Yeah. So he rode it on a horse, and he had it. <laughs> it said he rode it in on rode in on a horse that had a name that nobody knew except for him. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and so it's like he is. Him. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's him. It's him. Ooh. I don't know his name, but that's him. <laughs> you don't even know his name. That's facts. Crazy. That's a different type of... You know, you know why? Because they ain't never seen nothing like it. That's crazy, right? Crazy. How right does you got to be? You're like... It's, <laughs> I, I was, it's, like, it's like, I thought I knew him, though. But Bro. My, I know you is. But that's but, him, though. But, but, yeah. That's him. I was just talking to you yesterday, but... That's him. That's him. That's him. Because, oh, my goodness. Because you know what? We've never, at that moment in time in Revelation, we have known God, but we have never seen Jesus. Because you know how, like, Jesus has different names for different things. So many. Like, he has different names for provider, different names for comfort, a different name for, like, beginning and ending. Like, you know what? say all that like, in the Bible. He's, yeah, he's got all these different names that refer to the different Aspects of him. The aspects, the mm. ways that he shows up for us. Right. And in that moment where Jesus was coming, coming down to deliver judgment to everybody who was, like, for death and sin against the enemy, in that moment, this was the one time that Jesus has ever shown up like that. Mm. He's never done that before. Mm. Dang. So why would we, we don't know him that way. Right. We know that it's coming, but we have never experienced it. Wow. So no, no one knows that name. We know Alpha and Omega because he told us. We know he's a comforter because he's comforted us before. He has never delivered a judgment yet. Mm -hmm. So why would we know that, that name? name. Mm. He only knows it. Hey, bro, but that's him.
Mm. You know what's crazy? It's crazy to have so many names because you don't get a name for doing something like like half. No. You know? <laughs> no, you feel me? You get a name when you when you actually like facts like, like you did that thing. Bro, and think about like even like social media be like, bro, you know that boy who be uh who be rapping? Don't even know his name, yeah, but you know bull. that boy be rapping. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? Bro, who that funny boy? Yeah, yeah. And out of all the funny bulls on the internet, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Mm. Cause that boy funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Dang, Jesus did that thing. He did that thing. He, he did that thing a lot. For yeah. all them names. Dang. That wasn't even what I was gonna say. Oh. Uh, what you gonna say? Mm. I feel like we should just save it. Alright. Yeah. For another something. All right. Well. That's what you y'all out. Uh, uh, what do I do, Ryan? What do you think I should do? Just save uh, it, because you got to edit anyway. Save it? Yeah, because you, you I don't want the clip to be super long. And then, like, you know, I want I want to store the editing time. OK. Well, that don't, yeah. No, I mean, that doesn't. We're just going to end it, guys. All right. <laughs> this is what it's like to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Overthink my editing, brother. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs>